Uh, this is Python buff, uh, which means we will. There's no presentation or, or something like that. We will have a discussion here. Uh, there are some prepared uh, topics, but uh, we can talk about whatever is related to Python and Debian. Uh, so it's just a, su a suggestion. And uh, I guess we can start with uh, introducing ourselves. My name is Piotr Żarowski and I'm responsible both for a few tools we use, like DHPython. And uh, Zigo, do you want to introduce yourself? So, uh. so, uh, I'm the maintainer of the Moz the largest number of Python packages in Debian, and that scares me, okay, <laughs> because I do OpenStack. I'm new to Python, uh, maybe ah. I maintain a package or, or a few packages, but I plan to get more involved. Um, I'm just a user, I think. I, I work, I'm a Python dev, and I use Debian for any server that I need to work with, and uh, so, I am Nicola. I've, uh, I'm a member of the Python team. I do Python professionally, and I end up packaging the modules that we need uh, at work. Hi, I'm Everton. We use Pyth I use Python on embedded systems, so I'm looking forward to see how it goes. <laughs> Matthias, Debian Python package maintainer and maintain of some modules. Hi, I'm Jonathan, or High Voltage on RSC. I just maintain a few leaf packages in the Python team. Hi, I'm Pedro. I use Python usually to scripts for automation and also to improve, to enhance i3. Hi, my name's Matt. I'm a, a Red Hat uh, to Debian convert and looking to learn more. Hello, I am Emmanuel. I'm from Argentina. Um, I am Yuri, anyway. Uh, so, but I maintain some package uh, in Python. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm very much an end user of Python in Debian, but I want to see what's coming up. Hi, I'm Ole. I'm packaging the astronomy packages for Debian. Uh, my name is William. I am a WG on IRC, and I just joined the team of about two weeks ago. Uh, I'm Victor, and I've been using Python for uh, scientific computing for three years. I'm Arthur. I'm doing a GSOC project in Python, and I'm just starting doing packaging. Thanks to Zigo, he's here. He, he <laughs> yeah, that's it. I am Angelina. I made my first uh, package last night, so why not Python packages for another <laughs> time? <laughs> Hello, I'm Elias. I'm maintaining some, a few Python packages, and I want to learn more. Hi, I am Andre. Uh, I am one of admins of Python team, and we are using Python in our company. Here, I guess. The guy in the front. Yeah, the guy in the back first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamini. Uh, I, I work with Python uh, for embedded application. I'm okay. Teresa, and I work with Python. Hello, I'm Marlon. I work uh, with various languages. Uh, one of them is Python. And uh, I, I really like it. And, and Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to pass the microphone. Hi, I'm Tomasz. Uh, I uh, maintain PyCuda, PyOpenCL, and PyTools. Uh, so those two first more in the, re in the uh, NVIDIA team and OpenCL team, not Python team, but still those are, all, uh, are in Python. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm a Python dev. <laughs> Hi, what, is, what should I say? We are introducing ourselves. 
I am Andreas Tiller and I'm coming to the buff because I have some p Python programs and I'm coming too late by, uh, because I was occupied by a mother. <laughs> there's, oh, there's a whole bunch of empty seats at the front. Come here. <laughs> and hi, I'm Stefano Rivera. I maintain some Python modules and the PyPy interpreters. Okay, so I think the Python 2 removal will dominate this meeting, so do you want to start from something else? Because <laughs> if you, that's a good uh, time to, to do it because it will probably dominate it, the Python 2 removal. So, uh, so should, we st should we start with the next item then? So I added, does it work? Yep. Yeah. So I added the le last bullet point here. It's like, is there a, I like to have like different environments isolated from the system libraries to provide different versions of Python. And I'm not sure if that would be, if there's a sensible way to support that in Debian. And there is uh, similar apps, apps tools like software collections, I don't know, or environment modules that could be, we could have in, in Debian. So just what people think about it is that Something you have discussed in the past? Is that something possible? Is it impossible? I don't know, just to have your ideas, see what. I usually uh, try to have only one version of the library. If there are, uh, sometimes Upstream uh, provides, like in Jinja, and there's a Jinja and Jinja 2, so different name uh, for the module. So it mm, you can install both of them at the same time. But if the name is the same, then uh, it's not really supported in Debian. Uh, you can use some tricks uh, to, to switch them, but uh, it's not really a good idea. Uh, pro if you really have to, then uh, probably the way to do it is to provide a private library and then add syspath uh, um, app and this uh, new version if your application really need it, needs it. But uh, there's also DH uh, Virtual Env, but I never really used that, so I don't know if that works. Uh, I'm currently using the Virtual Env, DH Virtual Env, but it's like s software collections, I don't know if you know, but this tool, but like in Opt, you can have a jail with uh, different package, Python modules, and you can just tweak the linker and have your application use those libraries instead of your system libraries. <coughs> so um, it's not, not it's isolating the application from the system libraries. I mean, I understand system, we don't want to have different versions, but there are applications that depend on, uh, on different versions that are not the system ones. So that's... Uh, if I if one of my applications would need that, fortunately uh, none of them currently need that. But uh, in the past I had such situation and uh, I just bundled it in the uh, applications private uh, directory, so that to not to mess with the system wide uh, path. But uh, I don't know if others use the same uh, strategy. Maybe someone has a better idea, but... I would imagine most people deploying applications on Debian are using virtual ends for their libraries. But in the archive, we obviously don't want to be going... To for applications? Yeah. I don't use it. I, I maintain quite uh, some uh, applications and I just use the private uh, directory. So there's DH virtual env or virtual env is not involved at all. Uh, when I have uh, some kind of oh, many applications with many different uh, ways to work and depending on different lab libraries, I just use Docker and work with containers for everything. It's easier than have a virtual env and some other virtual environments way to deal with it. I would, would I have a totally different question. I just wanted to be recorded because we have uh, lots of Python packages in Debian which are maintained by random maintainers, not a team. And we have also in our team Python modules which could be in the Python team or not. What is the opinion? Should we try to 
assemble all the Python models uh, to be maintained by the Python models team to get some consistency in the packaging, or is it what we don't want? I think that end goal would be to have as many as possible in the team, but uh, I would focus first on uh, making the team uh, to work a bit better so that uh, we are uh, taking a look at... I just want to know the intention of the team, because yeah. uh, I, I just approached to try one, it was Python interval or so, maintained by, I don't know, but we had I had an issue with this package, and I asked the maintainer, "Do you want to join the team?" It is the correct way to approach people. Also, we say we don't care. What? What's so uh, I think it's a good idea to encourage people to join the team if they have to maintain random Python modules uh, as a dependency to their package. Um, I don't know. We if currently don't have that many people who are taking care of. All packages, the packages other than their own, yes. they own, uh, but the number of people who are taking care of them is uh, greater than zero. So yes. it's still better to have uh, packages in the team because sometimes at least Andre will uh, make a lot of uh, mass uh, commits with uh, fixes. So thanks for that. And uh, so do the uh, DPM MT administrators or owners do know how many packages uh, in these repositories are out of date or unmaintained? To be honest, I don't know that. Um, right. So uh, I don't care if, if, if a package is maintained by the team or by somebody else outside the team, but um, for me it's um, like like it, it's very difficult to to update things um or to to see things uh, which are not maintained within a team um and it's much easier to see if if you have them well just uh maintained by by a single maintainer then you see that they they well um they are flagged um if the maintainer is mir so it would be really interesting um i know the dpmt team is very very um a loosely coupled team, but we, we, we should have a better um, understanding um, about the quality of the packages or how, how recent these are. So uh, I think it'd be nice if we could collectively de decide that it's okay to enable any package in Debian to remove Python 2. So switching to the Python 2 topic. So yeah, switching back to the Python 2 topic. So because there's so many packages, if we uh, take the time to contact each and every maintainer of a Python 2 package to ask him if it's okay to NMU, then it's going yeah, to I never be finished. I was thinking about that, and I think we should start with a mail to, I don't know, Debian Devil. Uh, and proposing such a uh, thing so that uh, we will get a general approval for that. And uh, that's uh, why we are here to discuss what would be the, the rules of such uh, uh, uploads. Should we uh, mm, allow such removal only for packages uh, that are already for leaf packages in testing? Uh, that would be my I idea. So not the every package, leaf package in in uh, unstable should be uh, a reason to remove Python 2. Uh, but if there's nothing uh, that depends on given package in in testing, then that would be a good can candidate to to remove. And so a bit maybe this process will be a bit slow, but. Uh, well, I want to come back to this question from for me. The, the, the profit of a team maintenance is that I can easily do a team upload, no matter what, what change it is. Because if it's uh, by a single maintainer, I need to uh, file a bug report, release critical, do NMU. If I see a not maintained team package, I just do a team upload and have very, very easy access to the package. And you can do it, everybody can do it as a team upload without all the formalism. And this is my argument why it's be a positive thing if we have all the things team maintained. And then you can start removing Python 2 in the team upload. 
Because we are a team member. Yeah, that, you can that, force people to do so. Yeah, team packages will be probably the uh, the, <coughs> the easy ones that we will start with. An another question which I have completely open as well is, let's say, I have a package that I want to convert to Python 3 only, and then it has a reverse dependency of something that I don't know and it's too hard for me to uh, switch or remove Python 2 then I'll file a bug and what's the delay until I can say, oh, he hasn't done it, I d have no time to do it. Doesn't matter, I still upload the Python 3 only for my package that has a reverse dependency. I wouldn't do that because maybe this package is important and if you remove... Uh, but then we, we need a delay, so what's our delay until we say... Standard NMU rules apply, 15 days without response. I think it's two weeks, yes. Somebody would have to um, identify all packages. Didn't um, you want to do that? And then file bug reports, and after two weeks, but you can start If I work. understood you correctly, you, you, you have a package, your package, that uh, another package has a dependency on yours, and you want to remove Python 2 from your package. So uh, I wouldn't remove it un until all other packages uh, do not depend on it, at least at the beginning, maybe. Uh, Sorry? All, all can stop supporting it. <laughs> at least at the beginning. At some point, we will have to raise the bar a little bit lower and make it uh, more aggressive. But uh, we are at the beginning of the cycle and we probably should start slow, or, or maybe not, I don't know, that's... We have more than 1,000 packages in Teams, and it will we do one by one, it will took ages to remove Python second support. Yeah, but we should not block uh, package migrations either, uh, block other Teams. Uh, I think it's fine to block package migration to the testing if that package is still need Python 2 support, because Python 2 will not exist next year in upstream. I know, maybe in downstream, but do we really want to maintain that code for another release cycle and another one maybe? I think our users would like to use Python 2 in the next release. Are we now, I think it's official that we're going to the start of the agenda now. <laughs> this, 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 this agenda item seems to have been to have died in favor of this one. <laughs> um, if we drop Python 2, that's a disservice entirely. That's a disservice to our users, isn't oh. it? They use our distro so that they can ru ru get the software we provide to solve their problems. They haven't all ported to Python 3 yet. There's going to be a lot of people running on Python 2 for the next 20 years, probably. But then, then they don't have to upgrade. Right, and we, don't need to and we don't need to provide a lot of libraries. We just need to provide an interpreter and they can virtual env and do Yeah, I also can't maintain the PyPy stack without Python 2. <laughs> 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 I don't think that build chain is going to move to Python 3 for many years still. Do you think it is possible to ident identify p some uh, important packages that will definitely not get Python 3 support, like Mercurial probably? Uh, what? Are there more packages like so that? Mercurial there is a Python 3 port now, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, still already released, uh, but yes, I mean, having the interpreter in the distro is fine, um, but ha what I would like to, to see is that we drop the Python command um, in, in the next release. So We can do it right now. <laughs> that's fine, uh, that's fine, that's cool. So it's only so about so uh, rebuilding all the packages uh, with a new interpreter in right. the shebangs so or so that users have to make the choice um, to use either Python 2 or 
the much preferred way Python 3. I don't. Th I think it's not an issue. We. I it's hope. just. Uh, I. I think DH Python 2 already does that. If if not, then I can change it so that shebangs are re rewritten into a user bin Python 2, and we can remove it right now. It's right. not a problem but we at have all. Have all the uh, s stuff where we only use Python uh, 2 in the packaging, and that's al almost all using the Python, the unversioned Python shebang. So there is some work to do from my point of view. Do we need to discuss whether we want to do that then? Are we all agreed we want to get rid of user bin Python? Look. I don't care about user bin <laughs> Python uh, simlink uh, until what? it doesn't point to user bin Python 3. <laughs> So w what I don't understand is that you are saying that we need the interpreter for our users to be able to use, I don't know, let's say pip with Python 2. Yes. But then you don't want user bin Python, and then it will break things that will be installed by pip in user local bin. So do you suggest to our users that they do a symlink? Maybe, yes. We could provide a Python dash legacy package as well and get a popcorn idea of just how many people actually need this. It's, it's maybe a cool idea because we said uh, if you remove uh, um, user bin Python, it will break a lot of things. But I think it's intended to be broken that people realize there's a problem and and explicitly use Python two it, if they really want to do it. If they're not, then then we have broken packages and they will, they will not migrate to testing. what I like the idea to, to remove this. So, uh, of course, it's worth mentioning that Arch already did this and a bunch of things got updated as a result, but yeah. So I think um, the removal is a big task. We are a bit stuck now. Um, so I, I would like to have something where we uh, keep track um, about um, progress. And um, I mean, we are at the very beginning of the release cycle, and, and um, I mean, even after two or three months, we can see uh, how far do we get um, with just removing leaf packages or unused libraries, uh, and, and uh, then maybe decide in, 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 well, at the end of the year, uh, well, that's going too slow, we have to uh, do a little bit more, but is the release tracker thing already uh, set up or no? No. So, um, well, encourage people now to 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 remove stuff which is not breaking, which is not um, well stopping migrations and, and things like that, and 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 then decide um, well that's not going to work, um, but then we have at least something to start with. Yeah, I. Plan during the DevConf, I plan to uh, at least ide identify uh, team packages with the leaf Python 2 mm, uh, uh, binary packages and start removing them. We'll see how it goes. And uh, mm, then uh, move to the other packages. But so is there anybody in the DPMT team who could just keep track about the Python 2 status in packages maintained by the DPMT team. I, I was hoping uh, to get this uh, release uh, mm, tracker thing and uh, use that, but I, I don't know if it uh, contains maintainer. So can we... No, it doesn't. Who could grab... Uh, somebody of the release team to set up that tracker. I could. Thank you. Yeah. OK, one thing. Do we agree as a team that all team packages, which are leaf packages, can be removed just now or don't? 
Yes. Well, That's what now, I want I'm to do in the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have script for everything. So <laughs> be sure. <laughs> well, I, I think every library package can be removed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, from from um, module Steam, not from application. I yeah. agree. Yeah. And if we have applications which are not yet ported for um, uh, to, to three, then uh, yes, we, sh we, we should identify them. And uh, when we are close to the next threes, uh, we should s well reevaluate uh, do we want to keep them or do we have to remove them? But uh, it's not something we have to do now, from my point of view. Do we have some tech for the BTS for Python 2? Because I start. Um, I start filing bug reports about uh, Debian mid packages which, which are needing Python 2 and file bug report with some uh, title uh, tag, but uh, maybe we should tag this uh, on Python 2 and then we could browse the BTS for some, some common tag that's Python 2 and we need to deal with this. Do we have this tag or should we create something? And if yes, no, is somebody knowing how to do this? Okay. Yeah, some, something like this. Uh, but I just want to do not invent something else because by, by using it, so you use one, I, I use one that's not productive. So. So this week. I converted GPyB from Python 2 to Python 3 by just taking the latest version upstream, which wasn't uploaded by its maintainer uh, since two years. And I did that without contact contacting the maintainer. Should I be burned into the public place for not doing that, or should I be sanctioned? You shouldn't be burned, definitely not. What I'm currently doing, if I spot some application with Python 2, I go to upstream, uh, write a bug report in their um, in their uh, their um, bug report or mostly GitHub, file a bug report in our BTS uh, link to this, uh, and and I would like to have a um, some better way to to record all these uh, bugs and have this assembled on one place to make it publish also to other people than the Debian Me team. Can we create a wiki page with uh, all the hints what to do uh, so that uh, if I as a maintainer want to uh, suddenly find out that uh, Debian is removing Python 2, what should I, should I do? Should we create a wiki page yeah. something yeah, like that? That's a good idea, yeah. Um, I was going to say I work with um, I have a colleague who is a member of the release team uh, who will name, uh, remain name, nameless, but um, they would, I'm sure, appreciate the contact before removing Python 2 or starting to remove Python 2 and potentially making lots of packages across the archive. There's already a bug. Yeah. The, the three, uh, 931659 uh, is probably to the release team. So they should be aware already, B because they will be upset if um, if a lot breaks and um, well, we are trying to plan not to break. yeah, and and other migrations get tied up with right. with this and so on. A release goal should it still a thing? Should we be declaring this as a release goal? Yeah. Does anyone know the process for that? Just tell release team we would like this goal, please. Even if they're not a thing, making it very yeah. public would be a good idea to make sure that you know people are aware of this and not just Python people. Maybe I mail to Debian announce, Debian Devil announce. Action who? You? Okay. I think I will create the wiki page first, uh, so that uh, there's a general idea what to do and uh, what to expect, and then uh, a draft to Debian uh, Python, and then to Debian Devil Announce.
but anyway in the for the team packages uh it's okay to remove python to leave packages right now and uh, uh expect uh, some even uploads uh, in maybe this week if not andre then i will try to work on that and uh, that would be a start uh, but uh, there are many more python 2 packages outside the team so maybe this Uh, making people aware and uh, the problem is uh, not with uh, removing uh, mm, this in these packages but uh, um, problem is with applications that still use python 2 and are not ported to python 3 and if we remove some dependencies then these applications will stop working and we don't want uh, or maybe we want that but i think we shouldn't do that and and yeah, back reports are probably already filled so, so uh, wait a second we already have some lintian uh, text pending i so i'm not sure um i would have to talk with with uh, chris or with the um the uh, Linsen maintainers. Um, it, I think they are currently just information um, or not yet implemented, um, but we uh, should talk to them to to get all these Linsen warnings about using, uh, well, Python 2 as a shebang and, and, and things like that. Um, with that, we, we, we don't need to file that many bug reports, I think. How about well, making... I'm, I'm make Go ahead. Uh, I would rather prefer bug reports because they have the possibility to get the feedback of uh, if someone needs that. If you now start just to make important bug reports to say we want to remove Python 2 as much as possible, please remove your package that we can do that. Right, but uh, I, and I then I they can feed back and say, well, I need that for that and that and that has still that and but so I on. Then and then you come into that where you really. But I promise you, then maintainers start to remove packages which still have dependencies. Yes, that happened <laughs> a few days ago. Uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in any case, uh, Lintian cannot detect if something is a leaf package or not because it doesn't know what the rest of the archive contains. So we have to file bug reports or to have a, a script or a tracker page or something that's not inside Lintian, because Lintian won't be enough. The, the nice thing about Lintian is it's a technical way of knowing whether or not your package has dependencies on Python that you don't have to go and find out yourself. It, it will tell you if your shebang is using an interpreter that's going away or if you, you've got Python 2 dependencies of some sort and it's definite. So you can, you can use it while you're working on your package to make sure you've actually fixed everything you need to fix. Can we make this Lintian thing uh, an error already? Because uh, I think it yeah. exists and yeah. it's a Just info or warning. But I, I, I think everything, uh, either warning or error, is, is fine because it shows up on the tracker pages. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really don't care if it's a warning or an error. Maybe it's an error, but it's not. Uh, um, there are Lintian errors which are protect, uh, preventing a package from migrating uh, by FTP master tool. We should make it an error that the, the, the maintainer notice, but it should be possible to go to, to unstable. Maybe this is kind of compromise. Also, another thing I've seen a lot when removing Python 2 is that the, the the binary packages for Python 2 stays in the archive. Uh, so this must be something to do with the craft thing. There's no way we're going to file a report for every Python, uh, 3,562 Python 2 packages that are is still in the archive. Well, so how does it work? 
CPP masters remove them after a while. The, there is an automated process um, for, for auto decrafting. I, I know it exists, I don't know how it works, but it might be worth talking to someone in FTP or release teams to, to see. Yeah, if it wasn't working, that's a bug with their process and it sounds unrelated to Python 2 removal. I wanted to go back to the team subject, so you can have your Python 2 crap. <laughs> <laughs> so then it becomes hard for me to know what's remaining to do, because I typically would do up cache search to, or, or reverse depends or aptr depends to see what I should remove. And so let me give an example. I have Python PBR which I would like to remove Python 3 and I look at its reverse dependencies using uh, reverse depend and then I see a lot of Python 2 packages which I already removed Python 2 support for. So h how do I know then? Thomas, I think that binary packages Python 2 only are not in unstable, but they are in testing. Are they are in unstable. Are you sure? support for that. Maybe, maybe there is some option to draw a graph uh, based on UDD about the dependency, that you have a tree and you can start with the leaves also. Is it is somebody who is... is, is the, the, the release team the graphic will be helpful for that, I think. So the graph uh, is already there. Zigo created it. Graham is uh, saying on IRC that the craft remains because there are packages that still bit depend on them, and Brittany will allow packages to migrate even if there are packages that bit depend on the craft. So the craft was needed? Yes. So another issue is with uh, the doc documentation because a lot of uh, Python 2 packages uh, contain documentation and Python 3 uh, ones uh, do not. It's not a problem if we have a separate uh, binary um, uh, dash doc package. If not, then uh, we have to migrate uh, documentation as well. So that's something that uh, uh, once uh, um, Python uh, 2 binary package is removal maintainer has to be aware of and uh, it seems that there are many different uh, strategies to uh, provide documentation and some people add uh, b separate binary package some uh, ship in Python 2 using the user uh, share doc uh, python dash uh, foo uh, library sometimes it's python uh, dash foo doc uh, directory and uh, we probably should uh, decide uh, one uh, location for that so that we don't have so many options while we are removing uh, python uh, 2 so this could be done alongside the removal. Uh, I think that the best uh, location is user uh, sharp doc uh, python uh, dash module uh, directory and uh, symlink probably in in Python free uh, binary package. But uh can we write? Can we write a Lintian warning about this doc issue, or can you ask for this? Because this is maybe uh, if if we know about the problem, which you say, then it's 
the better. Yeah, the I, I are want better. to know if uh, somebody has a better idea uh, where we should well, we keep it. Whatever idea we come down, if we, we, we should have a linear one, even, even at current state, even if we have Python 2 inside out, it's, it should. Yeah, because right now Python. Po we should update Python policy about that and then ask for the LinkedIn warning. Yeah. Yeah. But first, we have to decide yeah. what's the right way. Wh where should we keep it? I don't care. <laughs> so it. it, it I I care I care to have only one place. The yeah. Uh, whichever w it will be, we should have one place, and then we can put it, decide um, uh, which one is it, and put it in the policy, then create a Lintian check or whatever. But uh, so the currently we have too many places right. to look for documentation. So the thing is, if, if you do not split the documentation, you naturally have it in, in Python 3 foo So um, I would like to see a symlink of at least in this place when I have uh, split off documentation. So I always find um, the documentation in Python 3 dash foo. Mm -hmm. so Maybe we that, can. That's uh, my rationale for that. Um, um, uh, I think we should keep the Python foo doc directory and not rename it to Python 3 foo doc. So Rebecca Palmer started a discussion about this on the mailing list on Thursday. I don't think there's been any replies to it yet. She's sent the link on IRC. I can add it to the copy uh, for this specific issue of documentation paths. So, so maybe we should uh, go back to that. I don't know what the discussion on mailing yeah. list. Yes. If I remember correctly, there is Debian policy. We should place it in main package, so not in the doc directory, right? It's a should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But uh, should or make other decision, right? Right. So, uh, if it will be without three, it will be in the name of source package. Because it will be name of source package, it will be the alone directory. Nothing else will be inside it, right? Because we will not have Python nothing uh, dash foo after we remove Python 2. So I think the Python 3 is the better thing because so the directory will not be alone. But, j j just a second, there will be packages with two binaries, PyPy and Python 3. So should we put it in, in Python 3 directory? or symlink it from the other directory, or put it in the doc directory and symlink it from all the others. Who is interested in doing that decision? Hands up. You are? No. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah, so I mean, please make a proposal and, uh, and then we implement Let's continue it. this discussion yeah. on yeah. mailing list. Yes. It's okay. probably... And uh, you mentioned PyPy. Should we uh, start removing PyPy uh, packages, packages as well? Yeah. Because uh, they are Python 2, actually. Yep. So, and Python, PyPy 3 um, exists now. Uh, exists now and uh, reuses Python uh, 3 uh, modules. So you don't need a separate uh, binary package in most cases. There are exceptions. I don't think any. I don't think so. We can check. So we should remove PyPy by, by, by binary packages at the same time looks as like, we. Looks like a couple. Yeah, this should be immediate. Repo search as we what we can go. You. Yeah. So is there some something else uh, 
as, regarding five. as we have five minutes left all right i'd like to s <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> no it was two times 20 minutes yeah there's, there's yeah, an i think we have five minutes break. left only What? I don't know if uh, we have enough time to start discussion about Python 3.8 because there's a new thing. Yeah, that but this is 20 minutes. Uh, Ma is 20 Matthias minutes. told me. Uh, but Matthias, tell us about debug packages. Okay, so um, <coughs> Python 3.8 is now in unstable in the archive and uh, it's not yet supported, but I wanted to have it um, in the archive um, to get a little bit of testing. Go ahead, Matthias. And um, um, we still need some infrastructure, like an updated Cyton for Python 3.8. Um, I'm not sure about Sphinx, if you really need it. Um, so um, the release will be in September. Um, so then uh, we can start talking about the migration or from 3.7 to 3.8. Um, Currently, we have uh, two different interpreter bu builds for Python 3. It's a debug interpreter and the, well, production um, quality uh, interpreter. Uh, in 3.8, uh, you um, it's now possible to, to load uh, debug extensions in, in uh, uh, the, the production interpreter or to run, uh, well, product ex extension uh, extensions in a debug interpreter. So the question is, do we want to continue to provide um, uh, the uh, dash dbg packages? Um, we could even try to extend that, for example, to, to build everything uh, with the address sanitizer or with, with, the, with some other sanitizers. Um, <coughs> however, um, be I would like to start with that only when we have dropped support for Python 3.7. So we make the transition, um, including the debug packages, So we, and, and then we can decide, yes, we want to drop them um, and, and or, or, or to keep them. Because as long as we have 3.7, we, we cannot do that move. So that, that, that's the thing with, with Python uh, 3.8, what I know about. Uh, what is important for, for the packaging. And um, besides that, um, there are no uh, new keywords like in 3.7. So um, I, I, I hope um, so the migration will be um, a lot easier than, than it was for, for 3.7. And with but this optimistic <laughs> thing, <laughs> we have to yeah. finish because uh, time is... Yeah. Uh, not our it's friend. not clear if 3.8 will be the final version for the next Debian release uh, because Upstream decided they want to have a faster release cycle and uh, even to, to get releases out every nine months. So um, that will be a challenge for, for the distro, I think. So, but yeah, so let's talk um, about that at, at the next DevConf um, when Python 3.9 approaches. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. We unfortunately have to stop now, but uh, if you still have questions, uh, uh, you uh, can come to us and ask. Uh, this is the main guy for the interpreter, and I'm uh, responsible for tools like DH, Python, and stuff. And uh, feel free to ask us anything. And this is the PyPy guy. <laughs> And thanks for coming. Thanks, Peter.